Hi everybody! Welcome back to A Case of the Jills. Uh, word of warning, Tulip is in my lap right now, so if she shows her fuzzy head in the camera after a little while, you will not be shocked. <laughs> so today I wanted to do this video to give you an update on sort of what's going on with me right now. As you can guess by the title of the video, I am going to be taking more time off of training. I wanted to explain this decision and tell you a bit about the signs and symptoms of overtraining that started to creep back into my world and how I was able to recognize them and make this decision, which is not easy, but you'll at the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why I'm doing this. I decided to go visit a really good friend of mine in New York City and we are both ultra runners, so of course, you know, it's not shocking that if you put two ultra runners in a room together, they are going to find some race to run. So we did. Uh, we did this race that was in Staten Island on Saturday. It was called the Conference House Endurance Challenge. It was going to be a six hour. So this was kind of good for me. I was ready to do something a little bit longer. So I was looking to get in at least a marathon distance, I was telling myself. I did not know what the terrain was going to be like. I had no idea what any of it was going to be. So I want to tell you about the couple of weeks leading up to the race so that we can kind of see where I was at. I've been feeling really good and if you've been following me you know that I was about to get my sixth period and the one thing I have to tell you and you know whatever if this is TMI <laughs> I don't know what to say I very much know when I'm ovulating and I don't know really why it seems to be that since I got my period back my symptoms both for ovulation and actual menstruation are really 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 strong. Okay, I'm being nice. I feel like crap. <laughs> oh my god, it's the worst. Ovulation is like someone kicked me in the pelvis, which is awesome. Also, sorry again if this is TMI, but I grow like an entire cup size on my bra, which is insane. And it's painful. It's so painful. It's the kind of like, I can't sleep on my stomach kind of painful. And that's just ovulation. I just feel so crappy. The worst thing was, and this, this is so embarrassing, I was running and I got this pain so badly this cramp pain so badly and this is two weeks before i was supposed to get my period i got this pain that just absolutely like leveled me and i had to stop on the side of the road you know that like you have to like like hunch over and like hands on the knees and you're like i'm either gonna throw up or i'm gonna die or i'm gonna i don't know something's gonna happen and i just had to let it pass and this car stopped and this dude like looks out his window and he's looking at me and he's like are you okay? Yeah, I'm great. Just, you know, no problem. I'm good. I really wanted to yell out the window. My ovaries are exploding! But I decided not to freak him out. Um, anyway, so ridiculous. I don't know why it seems that the symptoms are really bad. Again, since I got my period back, but I'm accepting it. And I was telling one of my friends this week, on some level, I feel that I kind of deserve it because I had no period for four and a half years. So... I mean, what else do I expect? Needless to say, leading up into this race, it was really uncomfortable. Also, you know, I'm thinking to myself, oh man, I'm probably gonna have my period for this race, which is not the end of the world. And I have read Stacey Sims' book, Roar, which I talk about all the time. I know from that book that right around the time that you get your period, those those days right, like the right day right before and also the day of your period, your hormones have dropped at that point. From a performance standpoint, if you can get through the symptoms, you should probably be feeling pretty good. So I was like, okay, you know, I know the science. I know I can get through this if I can just deal with the symptoms, but I was still nervous about it. Okay, but let's talk about some of the overtraining symptoms that actually, yes, of course, Tulip has to drink water right while I'm shooting a video. Absolutely. Anyway, so let's talk about some of the overtraining symptoms that I started to experience in the weeks leading up to this race. I do not know if the symptoms really came on with a vengeance because I was in that high hormone phase or if the overtraining symptoms started to come back and it just happened to coincide with the high hormone phase and it made it worse. I really don't know. I do know, and Tulip knows, I do know that the symptoms were not just one or two days, it was happening for several days and over a couple of weeks. First thing, insomnia. 
and that tends to be the thing for me. I wake up in the middle of the night with that hunger, that really deep crushing hunger that I explained before, which just wakes me right up out of a dead sleep, and it's always like 2.30, 3.30 in the morning. Eventually, it weighs on me. The lack of sleep really gets to me. I'm super sensitive to it now, and I definitely started to feel fatigued and also nervous before I was going to bed because I was thinking to myself, my God, what can I do to make sure I don't wake up in the middle of the night? It, it really starts to rattle you, and it's not a good feeling. So I started to notice more of those symptoms of hypoglycemia happening during the day too. I was getting really irritable in between meals. I was starting to feel that I was getting mood swings again. I was starting to get headaches or a little bit shaky and nervous. And you can ask my boyfriend. Um, I think definitely irritability was on the top of that list too. I was starting to get a little cranky pants. I hate to say that. It's just, it's such a sore spot for me because I don't like to be seen as bitchy. I don't want to be seen as cranky. So that was, you know, that's a big thing for me, especially when you live with someone. Like they shouldn't have to deal with you because you need like a snack or something. The first few days of this, I was like, oh, hmm, this is not great, but I wasn't ready to panic yet. I wasn't ready to think to myself, oh, this is, this is gonna be a problem. But then days were going on and on and on and it was happening every night with the waking up with the hypoglycemia stuff. And you know what? I just was like, I don't think this is right. So last Friday, I was like, okay, girl, you know what this means. You are headed down a bad road again and you probably should take another break. And it's like, I know that I had that conversation with myself many times over the years, but I never listened. I was always like, no, 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 I'll be fine. This is fine, it's no big deal. I mean, after all, a marathon is nothing. 50K is nothing, I can handle that. And I would just try to bounce back as soon as possible. But this time, I really said to myself, you need to take another break. You know, and, and of course, I'm, I'm as honest as they come, so you know I'm going to tell you the truth. And, and the two things that really stopped me cold last week were, okay, with all of this extra training, if your body is in a stress to the point where you're waking up with hypoglycemia, that means your cortisol is up. And when your cortisol is up, it means you're going to steal from your female hormones and you're going to start to store fat. And I'm sorry, like, I don't want to store fat. Sorry, I just don't. When it's unnecessary, when I don't need to store fat, and the only reason why I would be storing that fat is because I would be being a jerk and running too much, I think for me that's like, okay, no, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. So sure enough, because the goddesses of estrogen love me so much, the day before the race, I got my period. Now, this could be seen as a good thing if you are a person who suffers the most on the first day and then the second day you kind of feel a little bit better, but that's not me. I do kind of okay on the first day and then the second day is really when all the guns come out blazing. So I was really not excited about this. Saturday morning, I got up at my friend's house and I will tell you about my strategy to get through the day. So the first thing I did was get up early. Why? Because if you're like me, and you have major GI issues on the first and second day of your period, you need a little bit of time. The second thing I did was take two Advil. I don't really love the idea of taking Advil during a race. I know about all of the health implications that can happen with that. But I said to myself, you know what? It's six o'clock in the morning, the race starts at nine. I need three hours of no cramps just as a reprieve to kind of like help myself feel okay so that I knew when I got to the start line, I would be kind of feeling good. Because before that, to be honest, I was laying in the fetal position on the bed going, this is not gonna happen today. So fast forward to the race. I did all six hours and got 30 miles in. I probably could have squeezed in the extra to make it a full 50K. And I think the old Jill would have tried to do that, but 15 laps was enough for me. And I got to run most of it with my really good friend and we chit chatted the whole way. So that really made it fun. I couldn't, I couldn't think about adding another mile to that moment because it just was unnecessary. The interesting thing about the period situation is that I did not have cramps the entire time during the race. But of course, when the race was over, it seemed like everything started up again and then came the cramps again and the pretty heavy flow. During the race, I made a second promise to myself. Okay, you are gonna take the next week to be good to yourself. 
That means you are going to sleep as much as you need to, not do any exercise, so not even any walking or gym or anything like that until you really feel like it, and you're gonna eat and eat well until your body feels that it is on the road to recovery. This was really important for me because I used to think that a marathon was really nothing and that the recovery from it shouldn't really be a big deal either. So I would never, never honor myself with extra sleep and extra food and all this stuff. So I would typically run a marathon distance or even a 50K, give myself that day and maybe the next day to eat a little extra. And then the day after that, I would be like, mm, back to normal, which for me meant kind of eating less. That was a major factor in my body's inability to recover properly because without enough calories, especially in the days after a hard effort like that, your body is not going to be able to recover as well as it would if it was adequately fueled. So I drove home from New York on Saturday night. I ate an entire bag of popcorn, a couple of protein bars, I don't know, anything that wasn't nailed down in the vehicle. I got home, I had a full dinner. On Sunday I ate pretty much the entire house. On Monday I was in that mode of if I didn't eat something every two hours, I felt like I was going to die. I took a two hour long nap on Monday. <laughs> on Tuesday I ate more, but I didn't have that I'm gonna pass out feeling, so I just kind of ate as much as my body wanted, but I didn't push it. On Tuesday I took another two hour nap. So what did this teach me? It taught me that the endocrine system takes a lot longer to come back than probably even I thought. And what I did here was train myself up for a race and complete it and do great. And you know, 50K is nothing to sneeze at. But I still think that my endocrine system is not fully on point. It's not rocking and rolling like it used to. And I think that I'm much more sensitive to heading down the road of overtraining much more readily than I would be if I hadn't gone through this. So I think of it like frostbite. If you never get frostbite, it takes you much longer to, to, to experience those frostbite symptoms. But if you have had frostbite before, it doesn't take much for you to start heading down the road of frostbite again. I feel like overtraining is a little bit like that in the sense that because I've already been there, it's, it's much easier for me to go back there. So I'm taking the next month off of any hard training. I don't have any reason to really be hardcore training right now, and I think this is a perfect time through the holidays to kind of chill out. My next race is April 2nd, and that race is in Italy, and so I really don't see any reason to kind of kill myself up until I get to Italy and we'll start training there. I think my strategy moving forward is going to be to choose one or two or three races a year and I'm going to ramp up to that race, take a significant amount of time off, weeks, a month if I need to, and then start training again. I think in the past I was not interested in doing that because yeah, sure, it's a pain to train up from nothing again, you know, couch to 50K in you know three months or whatever you wanna call it. But I think that if I wanna keep going in this sport, I'm going to have to do the right thing. And for me right now, that means taking care of my hormones, taking care of my body, and doing a race, and then backing off. Because it's not how many ultras I do in a year, or how many ultras I do in a lifetime, it's for me the fact that I can continue to be active in this sport. And by the way, being active in this sport doesn't mean that I need to constantly be running. If I have a race to six months from now, and I decide I don't wanna train until two months from now, that doesn't make me less of a runner. It doesn't make me less of an ultra runner. I don't have to blow my brains out every weekend in order for me to feel a part of this community. And that's something I need to work on. This whole experience of training up for this race and now needing to take more time off is a very, very good lesson for me. In order for me to continue to participate in this sport, I need to understand that more is not better, it's just more. And the time that I take to rest and repair my body is just as good, if not better, than the time that I spend actively out there running on the trails. I'm saying all of this to you like I really am sure and I know what I'm talking about and I'm looking directly into the camera and I'm like, yes, this is the thing. But this is me telling myself it's not me telling you. I, I hope that you can see that. I'm just 
trying to convince myself that this is the right thing. No, I'm kidding. I know this is the right thing. It feels good. It feels right. And it feels like the right thing to do for me. I can't tell you what the right thing to do is for you, but hopefully in me sharing all of this, it gives you a little more courage to slow down when you hear your body asking for you to slow down or take time off when you feel that little voice in your head is kind of telling you, uh, maybe we should take some time off. Take the time off. When your body says, I think I need an extra day of some extra calories, maybe you'll listen. And I know that I'm trying to listen. I hope that this was helpful today in me sharing my story about this race and about taking more time off and what that means. Please comment below if you have any questions or if you wanna share your story as well. Please don't hesitate to share this video with some of your friends if you think they would benefit as well. And please become a subscriber to A Case of the Jills. That way you don't miss any of my videos and I would so, so, so appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.